Good morning, light bulbs. Welcome back to the porch. I'm Redrick Preacher, uh, your fellow traveler. Welcome in, fam, family. It's great to see you. So, uh, what is this? Thursday morning? Thursday it's morning time. Somebody's over sleeping. Good afternoon to you. So, we're going to start small, uh, like we do and right here. We're going to warm up a little bit, and then I'm going to take you guys to a different, little different uh, location in my home. We're going to go to a different studio, and we're going to talk in depth. Of, um, and I'm going to tell you a story about humility and being humble and courage and in that is hope and fear and the way I'm going to tell you that story is like we're just going to go into like story time and I'm going to tell you about Hope Harbor and Humble Harbor and people that live there I'm going to turn it into a nice little cute story so we can all kind of grab a hold and understand anyway that's going to be in just a minute first let's get through this work right now uh you guys like the shirt says this backward if you could read this backwards you're loving it right so this shirt's illegal in 53 countries, 40 nations, and 13 hostile areas. And that is, all right, love and light, Jesus Christ, the one way, the Yahweh. So um, Jesus is an outlaw. We don't, come on, duh. You're never going to find Jesus Christ or the living spirit of the holy fire. You're never going to find that in a box. You're never going to find it in a box of conformity. You know, ever, Jesus is the, is, is the original OG outlaw. And Jesus was against a lot of boxes here in the world. Talk about how him and him and his father and us were one great circle. The great sacred hoop, if you will. Shout out. <laughs> uh, shout out to Crazy Horse and uh, his crazy, uh, crazy Hey Yoka Ways and um, Black Elk. Uh, hey Yoka Ways. It's, it's that time. Anyway, if you're not hearing the language, let's, let's, let's tune in. I wanted to talk about uh, Jesus being an outlaw. We know this. And it's, uh, that's what the shirt's about. And it's great to know that we are outlaws too. So you're not going to find us conforming into boxes and circles because that's a place you're never, ever, ever going to find. The living spirit is conforming into boxes. Into boxes. So um, always being an outlaw. And that's kind of what we do. I had a, a unique experience this morning. Um, I seen somebody on Facebook post, uh, just a, ra a random person. Uh, they posted some a little uh, something long about... Um, you know, I'm spiritual and I'm beginning to understand that there's strength in spirituality. I'm leaving religion. Basically, they were saying they were becoming a religious refugee and a few pointers of why. To which when I saw that, I got excited like, hey, look at that, a light bulb. So I went to the comment section and invited them to the porch. And I'm not sure how they took it, but um, I always love to, to go, hey, fellow traveler, welcome home. Oh, my gosh, come sit with me. You know, because they don't know how lonely the last seven years have been or perhaps how lonely some of our lives have been up to this point. So it's really nice to find people that that, that speak the same love language you do. It's your native tongue, you know, so um, I really do come with open arms. So, but this other person on Facebook chimed in without even knowing who or what we are and climbed all over me for being spam for like, you know, how dare you talk about your church? And I got choked on that because I, this isn't my church. This isn't my church. This is God's church. It's the 11 church. It's the light bulbs church. It's the energetic church. It does not belong to me. And I did not create it. This and a bunch of people like me were already lying around in the world as we are right now. Um, I didn't do that. God made us like that. That's the, that's the reason I created the porch. With, with God navigating that is because I couldn't find a place to be. I'm spiritual and I kept Jesus. Where's people like me? Bang your own gong, you know? Rather, it's the great mystery, the, the great spirit, universe, creator. You'll get there. I don't I need to force feed. God, God's after his own people. This is going to be great. So, you know, sit here, bang a drum. Anyway, I was not shocked at all, but always like, because it just shows the true character of what's still out there. Anyway, this lady jumped all over me for, for being spam, and we don't do churches. That's what this post is all about. Didn't you read it? We don't do religions. So you need to go get off somewhere. And I thought it was, you know, once she, once she chided me for what she thought I wasn't or was, <laughs> I came back to her and let her know that, like, if you even looked at the porch, you'll realize that it's just a spiritual light bulb. We're all just sitting here together in a big old circle, uh, being a, you know, being the church out loud. You can have church anywhere you are. Church isn't a building. Church is a feeling. It's an emotion. So is love. It's energy. So, you know, I don't want to go to church. I'd rather be the church with a thousand other people hanging out on my porch because I have a greater time being at church than being in church. Okay? <laughs> or vice versa. I'm a little dyslexic, but y'all got my meaning. 
Um, anyway, I got a little fired up when I saw that. Poor people that, 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 that still uh, just look at something and judge it and won't go near it. So once she poked her head around about what we are and what we're doing, and I explicitly told her, it's not my church. I'm not Joel Olstein. You don't see the top of this saying Joel Olstein Ministries or Bob Frank Ministries or Bob Hagee Ministries or Joyce Meyer Ministries. The reason I did not use my own damn name to build a ministry is because I was schooled by the living Christ that I follow. My rule book said, and this, this is my rule book. I don't know if it's for anybody else. Apparently not. But my rule book was not to put my own damn name in the ministry that I run. The ministry is inside my chest. It doesn't need to be put on a marquee. And I don't need my name out there. I need God's name out there. I need Jesus' name out there. I need the living, burning fire spirit out there. I need the teacher out there, the great spirit out there. And, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just sitting next to that, being changed by that like a light bulb, just like you guys. The only thing I'm doing is I'm turning the camera on and I'm showing you my personal journey, my personal classrooms, just because that helps the fellow traveler, because we're all reflection, right? Less a teacher, more of the student talking out loud about what the teacher taught me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I just get a lot of misunderstandings a lot, and it really irritates my soul because I know who I am and why I'm here. And that gets judged and misunderstood by a lot of people, including my closest family. So I just wanted to reiterate my intentions once again. Um, what was I going to do? Sing there? <laughs> I had a little run-in with my nine-year-old. So we're going to talk about that real fast. If you don't have kids, jump off. If you know somebody with kids, perhaps send this to them. I'm also going to link this video to the other group that I keep. It's called... Um, um, that, I, that I, you know, I shepherd over. It's called a hashtag in Jake. I've mentioned it before. It's to represent conscious children, not parents becoming conscious to teach, to teach parents how to be, con you know, to raise conscious children. This group is for kids, for kids that are, are conscious. You know, um, I have a nine to 13 year old. All my kids, all three of my kids are conscious. And they have, um, I love to put that information up in the world for the other people to see. So um, the hashtag in Jake means not just a kid in power. And I believe that children should be empowered right where they stand. Adults, we're empowered. We're empowered by self-love. We're empowered by mindfulness. We're empowered by awareness and empathy. And these need to be taught to our children too. And um, so I'm all about empowering them where they stand. So anyway, I like to put videos up that make kids and parents stronger in faith, stronger in the spirit, and stronger in the walk. So this little doodad is also going to go over to the group uh, called Conscious Kids in Jake. Look it up. You know, join us. Um, my nine-year-old got in the car the other day and talked about how he had a pretty good day. And I asked him what part was pretty and what part was good. To which he told me that as he went throughout the day, actually, he started um, at the morning's breakfast where his friend didn't come to, to sit with him at breakfast. His friend was missing that day. So as he sat there by himself, he said, Mom, I was going to be lonely, but I... Literally, I took your advice, you know, but I talked to Jesus this morning. I said my prayers this morning. I said, oh, I'm driving out of the school valet. And I'm like, oh, really? That's awesome. How'd that go? He's like, I prayed for God to, for Jesus to help give me a good day. And everywhere I went, people were just nice to me. I didn't get in trouble today. I got all my work. I had a pretty good day. And I feel really good. And I said, well, that's great, bud. That's so great. And out of, and now that's where I left off, and, then, and Spirit is always co-parenting my children with me, just like he's being a prophet in front of the crowd with me. He's being a teacher to me as long as well with other people. What you see going on the outside for other people to hear is also happening on the inside. I'm hearing it too, you know? So this is a moment right behind the driver's seat where I was still driving. I'm still talking to my kid, but a holy takeover... You know, this is what makes me look like a good mom is when Jesus gets involved and co-parents my child. And so I was like, really good, buddy. I'm glad you prayed. And that's the mom of me. And then the, whole, the, the higher self, the, the one that's in union with Jesus, that mother, that, you know, and his Holy Father came through me and continued the conversation with my son. And that's what I'm like, oh, that was a great conversation. I didn't even know I had that in me. I'm glad that happened. Thank God that God is raising these kids with me. And what he, he turned around through me and said to my son was, Hey, buddy. And my son's like, yes, mom. And I said, man, the reason you had a good day is because, and then I, I, I backed up in my mind. I said, I said, hey, Jackson, isn't um, the sun energy? And Jackson loves everything to do with uh, science and math and maps in the world. He is a gifted and talented student. He's nine years old, and he's, he's just super, super smart. 
And he, he understands these things. I said, isn't the sun energy? He said, yeah. And I said, electricity is energy? He said, yeah. The wind, water, these things are energy. He said, yes, Mom. I said, well, love is energy too. Don't you feel it when you hook up with your heart to Mom? When we hug, we put our hearts to hearts. I don't let my kids side hug me. Um, I, let, I make them hug me straight on to get that heart hooked up. I call it heart hooking up, you know, like boat docking. Put your heart on mine. And when they're feeling bad, I ask them to push all their yuck into me. And then I push all my good into them. And we don't release the hug until they're ready. And they feel like they've gotten their water purified. You ever taken dirty water, put it underneath the sink until that dirt flows out of the cup? That's what I'm doing heart for heart for my kids when I'm hugging them as a mom. And I'm able, like Green Mile, you're able to take that in and release it and get rid of it. And you fill them up with good water. And my kids know that we have that power between us. So just to do a little little side street there. Um, I told my son, I said, love is energy. That's why you could feel it when we hook up our hearts. And my son's like rocking with this knowledge. He's getting it. He's like, yeah, I hear that word, mom. I said, well, when people are shitty to you all day at school and your teacher comes to school with an ego problem and you get in trouble or just, you know, you're a sensitive guy. You get your feelings hurt. I said that starts to create nasty, like bad energy. And that's the devil, son. The devil's really not a three foot guy that pops into your room at night. And the devil's energy too, buddy. Just like the, the, the gravity. Can you see gravity? He's like, no, but it's there. He's like, yes. And so there are things that we can't see, but we do know that they're there. I you know. So, so he's really at nine years old as a fourth grader. He's in the back rocking with this knowledge. I really only got maybe six blocks before I'm home with the guy. So I barely got two minutes in the car. And to see what Jesus did with those two minutes is to, is to open my son. Open my son. And so he's getting this knowledge. And I said, you know, so the bad energy is energy. And you suck it in. You take it in. And then you get bad energy. You become cranky and and short and mean and and really sensitive or crying or combative whatever it is and he agreed and then i said then when we got two minutes i take you home you get out of the truck you go inside and you spread all that bad energy around next thing you know you got your siblings are fighting your mom and dad are yelling and i said the devil's just sitting there in invisible like gravity going yeah yeah oh you're right i got the family fighting i got jackson mad i got I got that person hurting a loved one right there in their own family. You know, I said, that's what the devil does. And that makes him smile because he's working through you to get the job done. And my son's eyes lit up like there was a huge aha. He got it. He understood how this spiritual battle is, is going on around him all the time and how he plays an integral part. Boom. He's fourth grade. I didn't get that till I was 32. Really? <laughs> you know what I mean? I've heard of it. Nobody sat down and explained it in a way where I'd understand it, like reading time, you know? So, or doing algebra. So, he understood it. And I said, so when you're at school or you're doing things in life, if you pray before you show up, I said, son, it's like angels just go around. And if some kid was going to be mean to you, angels just touch his shoulder. And then all of a sudden, the love goes in his heart. And instead of being mean to you, you walk by and he says, Good morning, Jackson. That's a nice jacket. And you're like, thanks, man. Just going on with your day thinking that God wasn't even involved. And you know, son, that if you pray before you go, that they're going to go before you and touch everything you're going to be around. So you're like, to have a good, pretty good day. And you're going to have a pretty good day. I said, so there are times where the devil might sneak in through a crack because devils are like octopus. You ever seen an octopus? They can fit in a mason jar. Jackson understood this. He's in fourth grade, you know. I said, so it's kind of like the devil's an octopus. Sometimes he can sneak through little cracks in that nice, pretty good tunnel that you're, you're hanging out in that you prayed to, pray to be in. I said, but when he does that, don't get mad at God and don't sit there and get invited to bad feeling town. And that's something else I tell my kids, you know, the devil's always inviting you to bad feeling town. Come feel bad feelings with me for like four hours and ruin your own dinner, you know. Kids fall for this shit every single day, if not three times a week. And I got to make my kids aware about the spiritual battle that they're in an integral part of. So telling Jackson that he has power and to be empowered in his daily life, to control, to have a say so in his own happiness, balance and peace and boundaries is 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 pinnacle power to give to a child and to let them know that they can yield this power so jackson then started to understand how he was 
Um, in the in the in the bench seat in the front. If he's not in the driver's seat and Jesus is driving, Jackson's in the passenger seat. That's where you want to be. And if you're not in the passenger seat, you're driving and Jesus is over there. You want to be in the bench seat up front, you know, with, with the Lord. So Jackson started to understand how the devil can crack get through the cracks and still, even on a pretty good day, something happens. Something gets pinched in you, your feelings, your pride, what have you, and you get invited at that nanosecond to go hang out with the devil and, and feel bad town. Run your own kind of day town. You know, don't do that, Jackson. Tell the devil to get behind you, go back to hell. I got better things to do. I'm above this. You know, and tell yourself that I'm, I'm worth being happy for. I'm worth being happy for. So Jackson starts to go, oh my gosh, that's how you fight this off. You know, so I'm going to stay happy. So he, he's going back to school today and, and um, you know, coming, he's telling me about these instances where he had a choice and he's making that higher choice and how good it felt to tell the devil to get back to hell. You know what I mean? And it's hard for us in a carnal mind to be in a nice mood or a happy mood when we feel like somebody pinched us or did us wrong or, or violated our shoe tops. It's hard for us to turn around and be nice. You know, you're also like, how do you do that? I want to tell you off. Well, if you act like my son's acting, he didn't even see that. He, he, his ego just left the room without even so much a roll call. It's Adults have a hard time getting out of that ego, that carnal mind that says, I want to tell them off. I want to flip them out. Wait, you need to come here. Come here. I'm be, you know, uh, uh, telling Jackson, who's nine years old, you know, hey, bud, don't spend time in that town. Just turn around and tell the devil to get the hell out. So he's more at to turn around with kindness or just turn around and give you his back, okay? Because he, he doesn't want to stay in bad conversations that make him feel bad. He's in ownership of his own nervous system. He's ownership of his own ADT and peace. And he's starting to get this in the fourth grade. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so um, Jackson didn't even see the ego in it. He doesn't think first thing, well, no, wait, wait, wait. I, I'll do that nice thing in a minute, but right now I tell them all first. And then I'll go and be in a, in a higher way. No, you don't need to tell them off. Just be in a happy place all the time. Somebody does some shit, you can say, you know what? I don't like how that made me feel. That made me feel this way. I'm not going to roll with that and turn around and give them your back and walk off. That's boundaries, son. Not being rude. It's intellectual for you to do that. So my son at nine years old and in fourth grade just realized the beginning of the stages. And you can't give it to him all at once. He's nine. But he can start being a soldier in his own life, battling these, these uh, spiritual attacks and these spiritual warfare, these emotional invitation systems that the devil has for us, this, um, these types of things that take us a lifetime, if not most of our lives, to kind of crack open and, de and, and decode, you know? And I'm really proud of Jesus here for co-parenting through me. And that he turned around at this moment where I was done being a mom. I was like, I'm glad you prayed for school, buddy. And I'm glad you had a great day. Back to driving. Jesus was the one that turned around and continued to be a parent to my child and had this two-minute conversation with him where he was like, you know what? This is energy and this is energy and this is energy. You get it? And he's like, yeah, I get it. This is bad energy, bad energy, bad energy. It becomes you and then you spread it around. You get it? I got it. This is what good energy looks like and how you obtain it and keep it and how it serves you for the rest of the day. You get it? You got it? And, and, and Jackson's back there just like, yep, yep, yep. So by the time we got in the driveway, Jackson was, he likes to repeat knowledge. He just got this the way he is. So he puts his jackpack, you know, on and we're walking to the front door and Jack goes, hey mom, so pretty much I'm the CEO of my own town and I get to say what goes on around here and if, and I can't control the world, but if the world does me a certain way, I can't control to walk away and keep it with Jesus and tell the devil to get away from me. Yes, sir. Don't spend your time telling other people where to get off. Turn around, look down, tell the devil to get back to, back to his own damn town. You're not going there. You're not telling them off. You're not going to some nasty town. You're turning around. And your values are not out of your mouth because you have to scream what you're worth to someone. Your values are printed on the back of the t-shirt. Nobody's going to see it with your mouth moving like this when you're facing a person going, I'm worth this and I'm valuable and I'm this. They're not going to hear you. They're going to hear you the moment you turn around because the values are printed on the back. On the back. And they read that as you're walking away. That's a very powerful thing. So I let Jack know that his values are actually on his backside. And no one's going to see your values or your boundaries if you're standing there fully frontal in front of them with your mouth moving. you got to turn around. And that's not our fault that people are like that. It's just the way that it is. And, um, you know, so my son was a whole hell of a lot empowered 
and not just a kid. I'm empowered in the spirit just as much as an adult can be. Don't send me down to children's church and have me color some stuff that I half ass understand. You should have me in a spiritual church and learn it with my 33 year old mother and my 15 year old sister and my 61 year old friend. I should be in a spiritual church learning with everybody else the same ages and stages and we should all get the same power at the same time, leaving no one behind even if they're 42 inches tall, or if they're ignorant as hell. Jesus not leaving nobody behind. And that's why the, this spiritual church that we have between us that is of the Lord's, you know, I'm just navigating with him, and I'm really, I'm just driving. And he's telling me where to drive. Sorry you guys can't see him, and it looks like I own this church, and it's all me. It's not, it's him. Okay, it was him long before I even showed up. It was him, you know. So I just got a light bulb on for what God's doing. And if you have children, it is definitely in my heart to take these moments like this and kind of be the porch, the porch junior, you know, because there's moments like, I talk about moments that happen in my life and where I learn in the spirit on the porch all the time. They're of my own experience, my own life. I'm, I'm spiritual storytelling in a Hayoka way. Um, I like to take that same spiritual storytelling uh, over on to NJ because I do have living experiences with three different sets of kids. Uh, girls and boys from 9 to 13 on the daily, on the weekly, on the monthly. And there's so much mama there. And it's just little things. And I'm not the only one raising kids and power children around the world. So God said, and, and he did tell me, so I'm acting out of obedience, not out of ego. God did tell me to, to create NJ and go over there and basically do the same thing, but do it for children. You know, let them know. Have conversations about the most confusing thing in the, in the universe besides math is God, especially to children. Math, God, and sex are things that kids, kids just don't understand. And even teenagers don't, young adults don't understand it. Somehow there's a miss in, 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 in teaching us those very, very hard subjects, you know. And uh, no more of that if we can help it. So anyway, that was that. I'm going to switch places. We're going to go somewhere else in the studio in the home here. And we're going to have a cool ass story about Humble Harbor and people of Courage County. You're going to love it. I mean, come on. You're going to love it. We'll see you guys in about 15 minutes. Thanks so much for the love. Thanks so much for the shares. And um, we'll see you in just a little bit. Like I say, stay kind and stay the hell out of your mind.